Hey everyone and uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video will be part two of my little um, customised coffee coasters that I did with you last week and showing you the Fusion 360 tutorial. So in today's video I'd like to show how I actually went about making these and as you can see uh, lots of my family members put in orders and uh, this is one I made for my little um, baby daughter Sarah who's had a little baby herself. Now, we're going to use the Dobot Muse here, the Muse 3D printer, it's a 3-in-1 machine and this is the software that they use for laser engraving. And you can see I've brought the image in and scaled it down here and there's just a couple of settings I had to do was to change the, uh, the laser power and feed rate and you can see the code is generated to the right hand side. Uh, we export that onto the little miniature SD card and save it and uh, straight over to the Muse we go. Now this is a 500 milliwatt uh, blue laser diode and that engraving speeds at 400% at the moment. So you can see that I'm really sped it up here for the sake of the footage. Um, I've actually got this in an enclosure with some acrylic plastic to protect from the uh, laser radiation and burning your eyeballs out. Now it engraves by just doing a rastering so it's using an image and rastering over that image. And this is the actual speed slowed down, and uh, I set this speed to about, I think it was between 1500 and 1750 uh, millimeters per second. And of course, rapid traverse was about 2000. Alrighty, so to 3D print this, I'm using Cura. And mine 3D printer is a Cocoon Create, which was sold by Aldi Supermarkets here in Australia. But it's basically a Wanhow i3 duplicator. And I've brought the STL file in from Fusion 360, thrown it on the bed, flipped it around and, uh, and sliced it using the post-processor provided by the company Cocoon Create, which pretty much is the Wanhow i3 duplicator one. You can see the G-code here and just simulate the slicing here in the, in the software real quick just to give you an idea. Now, the total time for this was about three hours. And I didn't film all of this, I just filmed this in sections for you to give you an idea if you haven't 3D printed before, just to show you how it's actually working. Uh, I chose to build a raft on mine to build it up and you can see it laying down this raft at the moment. And that's pretty much the inlay for the internal support. Okay, so I print this uh, upside down, so I want the good side facing out. Okay, which is the base with the little feet on it. And you can see the lid here and the pins. Now you may want to protect your timber somehow. I use 3 mil ply when I laser engrave mine. I had some old wattle stain here and just applied it with a tissue because I, to be honest with you, I didn't have any brushes at home. I'd run out after doing lots of painting on my tool and cutter grinder. So I just applied that with a tissue uh, delicately and of course wiped it on in the direction of the grain. Now, if you don't want to use uh, that sort of stain and you want something a little bit more low voc, well, don't be afraid to use, uh, you know, cooking oil, you know, canola or olive oil or something like that. Of course, it won't have the sort of longevity that the stain will give you, but it's a little bit safer if you're worried about chemicals and that sort of thing. So good old-fashioned olive oil and painted that on as well, all right? Uh, once I cleaned up the base and the lids, I inserted the pins into the base. You can see the little pins here, they just press in. And depending on how accurately your 3D printer prints, of course, you'll have to adjust those pins to suit yourself. Mine were a little bit tricky to get in, so I just used a pair of pliers to push them in. Uh, now, these are the sole ones that I made for my good buddy Greg. And I'm just using some Loctite 401 super glue here. Now, just remember, don't glue your fingers together. And I've got some clamps here that I'll just put on some paper clamps and some other clamps that I use in my workshop to hold it all together. And once that's finished, you can take the clamps off and voila, there you have it. Your customised 3D coaster ready for Christmas presents or whatever you want to do with them, guys. The, remember, free files in the description area. Help yourself, knock yourself out. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.